The Shed Podcast. I'm Chad. I'm Brian. And uh, we are literally no jokes in a shed. You can see Absolutely. up here, I want a shed. Do you think my wife's going to let me put something like this in the house to do this podcast? No, nah, I don't know. You crazy. You ain't mad uh, So the reason of starting this podcast is really just touch on, you know, car related stuff, new cars coming out, car shows, uh, local shows coming, big shows happening, and uh, what we kind of expect out of, you know, shows uh, when we attend and stuff like that. So I mean, like one of one of my favorite parts, and I think I can say this for Chad too, is just like getting to talk to people at the car shows. You know, this just this gives us another way to do it without having to be at a car show to do it. So yeah, yeah it's uh, some of my great memories to be honest with you. If you want to put it like that, it's you know sitting there talking to people. I mean, we just had a show this weekend. Actually, last weekend and the weekend before. Yeah. To be honest with you. Uh, but, you know, just sitting around talking, uh, talking about people's bills, what's kind of going on, uh, what kind of cars is out on the scene right now. It's kind of killing it. And I mean, we've met some great people, made some awesome friends just out of doing this. So, yeah. so uh, we're going to kind of start with some shows that's kind of happening this weekend. Uh, coming up this weekend, we have the Spark Show. It's in Cerebral, uh, Tennessee. That's where me and Frankie and the family is all going. Uh, we're going to be down there the 11th through the 13th, uh, just kind of wandering around. That show uh, is at the Severe Fairgrounds, um, but it's kind of open to everything. It's more, it's more probably mini trucks, I would say maybe than anything. Mini truck heavy. Yeah, but I mean to say that they don't have some awesome muscle cars, right. lifted trucks, stuff like that. They they got it going on. So uh, Adam Dizzy and the guys. Has really killed it uh, with that show. Uh, so we'll be down there. I got to introduce Frankie to uh, my favorite restaurant down there. He's never heard of it. It's called no. Blue Blue Moose. Yeah, apparently uh, Barn Grill. off the beaten path, and the wings are worth the drive. So yeah. we'll find out. We might eat it once, twice. I mean, three days in a row. We might. So they have wings. They got beer. They got burgers. They got burgers. They got it all. So if you can't find us at the show. We're probably going to be there, bro. Uh, another show going on down there. Uh, it's the eighth annual Smoky Mountain Mustang Invasion. And that's in Pigeon Forge. So it's literally a hop, skip, and jump for where we're going to be. So there's a lot of Mustang uh, guys in this area that goes down there and helps with yeah. the show, enters the show, stuff like that. So to say we probably won't touch base there at some point, um, it's probably going to happen. But it's going to be the 11th through the 13th as well. Yeah, I mean, if anybody knows my wife, that is a Mustang fan girl. So the chances of me getting down there and not going to that show with her, it's it's not. Like we're we'll be there at some point or another. We're gonna check it out. We need to take a Chevy though. That'd be awesome. There you go. That might not work out. Uh, maybe we need that black Mustang we have at the show. Maybe. It's a little LS power Mustang. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll show up with that. Kind of sneak in. Uh, another show going on, uh, my buddy was telling me about this, he's from the Roanoke area. It's the 45th Annual Street Scene uh, show in Covington, Virginia. It's August 12th, which is Saturday uh, from 7 a.m. to 4. They got a lot of stuff going on at this show. Um, you know, I checked out their Facebook page, and then of course my buddy was telling me about some of the stuff going on, but at nighttime they got a band going, they got a pre-party you know, the night before. Uh, a lot of stuff for the kids. They got a model car show here and say like that. I mean, that's something that I personally love. Like, I ain't got the patience for it, but I'm a sucker for model car wheels. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. I think they got some fireworks and stuff he was saying going on uh, that night too. So, and I mean, let's be honest, it's 45 years. It's got to be a decent show. Yeah, I mean, you ain't doing the wrong thing and lasting 45 years. No. So, kudos to that old team. Yeah, uh, putting that on. Uh, 45 years, that's super impressive. So, And he was telling me it's one of the biggest shows down in that area. Right. So I It's guess not really our neck of the woods, so I can it's guess not. I can see why I've never heard of it. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. Um, you know, maybe it's something we kind of venture to try to go and check out next year. Yeah, right. I'd love to. That big, maybe. got a lot of stuff going if on. nothing else, maybe just to pick brains on a couple of guys that's, that's putting it on. Yeah, it's always nice to especially if you're a show promoter that's what we typically do is we'll try to go to a couple shows not even to enter but just kind of see how they run things yeah 
Um, like where, where's something we can improve on yeah. what we're doing? Um, you're not always the smartest at running a show. No matter how good you think you are, yeah. somebody's got an idea to do it better. Right. And that's with life and everything. So. And I mean, it might be something that we've tried before, didn't work out, we didn't like it. You see them doing it a different way, and you're like, man, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. uh, also, too, if car shows isn't your thing, got a couple of cruise ins going on. Uh, Van Stato cruise in in Bluefield, West Virginia from 5 to 8 on Saturday. Uh, we've been to that one a couple yeah, times. If you, if you haven't been, it's a really good cruise in. I mean, you know, it's not two, three hundred cars, but. There's, there's some quality rides showing there is. that cruise. There's been a lot of times that we went there and passed out flyers yeah. and got some of the cars that we haven't seen before come to our event. Yeah. And uh, very nice cars. So, uh, and, and with cruise ins and stuff, nice thing about a cruise in, it's just not money out of pocket. Uh, you yeah, go, I mean, hang out, you leave when you want. Um, you can hang out with your buddies. Maybe y'all decide, I want to hit a you know restaurant down the road. Maybe I'll go you know, grab what to eat, come back, or go home, whatever. But Cruising's always fun. I'm surprised more people hasn't jumped on the whole cruise in. I agree. I mean, like I've said to you before, I just I don't think cruising's get enough love. But like, no. you know, no, they ain't got trucks. No, most of them don't have vendors. But I mean, if you break it down, that cruising's like the essence. Yeah. Like it, it kind of the roots of where it all was. It is, and. You know, if you're putting on your own show, you you need to try to attend, pass out flyers, something to as many crews in uh, as you can yeah. uh, to get the word out about your event. You know, social media has kind of got a lot of people spoiled with, I'll just throw up my event. It's just too easy. Um, but the old fashioned way of going, kind of shaking hands, Passing out flyers, you know, meeting people you've never talked to before. Talking about some vehicles, they know you're knowledgeable about it. If they don't have faith in you about a show, they're not going to come to your show. Well, I mean, even, you know, back to the social media thing, if they've never been to your show, they're probably not following you on social media either. All right. You know, so you getting out there, you just make up one guy at, you know, an advanced cruising. That one guy comes to one show, and tells his buddy, who tells his buddy, like these people may not even have Facebook or Instagram or anything else, and you missed out on that whole group because you didn't even stop by cruising. Well, and a lot of times, I've seen this personally, um, you know, maybe you don't have Facebook, stuff like that, you're older in age, or you just don't wanna mess with the drama and everything, but I mean, I'm not comfortable with, with that one, yeah. Um, there's little clicks at these cruising. There is. And let's be honest about it. There's little clicks. So within these clicks, you know, it's just like if me and you was in this little click, what are you doing this weekend? Well, we're going to the Spark Show. Well, if we got two or three buddies about it, you know, we're talking, then he goes and gets a drink over here, yeah. and he's talking to a guy, what are y'all doing this weekend? We're going to this show. The spark show. Um, you know, cruising's great advertisement if you're going to put on the show. Right, um, yeah. I think I mean, more even if you're not, time. like even if you're not, even if you're just somebody that's got no car and you don't want to dedicate a day to a car show, yeah. you know, take an evening, go hang out at a cruise in, see some cool rides, get some ideas for yours, brag about yours if you want to. I mean, you know, I mean, that's why you build them. That's, that's Let's be honest. Right. Like, uh, there's another show, uh, cruise in. Uh, as well, it's called Saturday in the Park. I uh, had a uh, a girl that goes to Madison Mountains. Uh, they come to a lot of our events, but they shared it. Uh, it's in Radford, Virginia from 12 to 3 on Saturday. Okay. Um, so what they're doing, and this is kind of awesome, they got a $500 cash prize if you register kind of their little cruise in. So they just register. Yeah. Like not a best to show or anything yeah. like that. You register, put you in the drama. Put you in the drama, so you could have the worst car there. Um, Still walk away with probably. You could walk away with five hundred bucks. That's pretty nice. Uh, I kind of like that. I like five hundred bucks. Um, why not? We might have to venture into kind of get yeah. that up one day. Four sixty six mile ways. <laughs> Still walk away with something. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of nice. So yeah, kudos to them. That's awesome. It should be a big draw. Yeah, I mean that that they should have a good turnout with that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's it's a rain or shine event. I did see oh, that. That's, so, that's 
Yeah. You never know about weekends. It seems like it doesn't matter if it's a fair going on or a car show or a cruise in. Yeah, it it's going to be a nice all week and weekend. Sky falls out. But it's especially gonna, in the last year. Yeah, that's all. That's all it does in the summertime. Um, so we're going to start um, a little section here called debates. And on the debates, we're just going to kind of talk, see what your opinions are, see what my opinion is. And uh, you guys at home, you know, feel free to comment in the comment section uh, what you guys think. Um, maybe you got some different opinions or, or what have you. Um, so one of the questions is, what do you look for in a successful car show? Okay. Uh, me personally, I've got a wife, I've got kids. Um, if I wasn't putting on a show, if I'm just going to the show, I want it to be something that we can go enjoy as a family. Right? I agree with that. You know, if you're a single guy and you got a nice car, you can go hang out in a parking lot with nothing else but a bunch of old cars and probably have a pretty good day. But if you're not lucky enough for your wife and your kids to be into it as much as you are, then, you know, they, they need to get a little something out of it. Uh, and you know what? I keep saying wife and kids and this and that. We've got plenty of girls that brought cars to our show. That's you know, so there's, there's probably wives out there that's wanting to show off their car. And their old man's like, hey, it's, you know, it's football's on today. We need to go. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it needs to be something that either couples or a family can go do, have a good time. And everybody can take something home that day. Like, just, well, I met a guy at our big show this year. Um, he'd been working on his car for the last two years. And he finally got to bring it out. And, you know, it was him, his wife, and their three kids. And I was talking to him, and he was telling me about how much they enjoyed the show because his wife, his kids, and him didn't have to just sit there at the car. You know, the kids had a bounce house. His wife got to go look at a thousand cups and you know they all had a good time and nobody was rushing anybody they was just actually having a good family day that they could enjoy and I mean that meant a lot to me. I, I like that just to kind of pick up I mean I think you get it right on the head there um, I think to have a successful car show you got to make it fun for the whole family um, whether you're just single going to have a good time uh, with a guy or a girl, um, or you got to bring the whole family along. A lot of people can't pay for a babysitter. Yeah. Uh, a lot of daycare stuff like that's not open on the weekend. So, you know, with having as much stuff as you can crammed into a car show, as far as vendors go, food vendors, you know, let's just say, me personally, I don't go to a car show to look at cheetah printed shirts and cups. And hats, but maybe Frankie does. Might do it. Well, I mean, it's kind of like with the carnival when the carnival comes to town. Yeah. You know, not everybody that goes to the carnival goes to ride the rides. Right. There's some people that cannot wait to get that phone call. Right. Same thing with state fair. Yeah. Some people can't wait to get that ear corn, or that turkey leg, or go look at the cows, or this or that. I mean, these things have lasted so long and done as good as they do because they've got multiple options for multiple types of people. That is correct. You know, if you've got, let's just say, a vendor that maybe my wife would like over here, that's great. That doesn't mean I despise them or don't want them to set up. That's great. I want it to be, everybody take advantage of something there vendor wise. So if my wife likes these cups, that's great. Maybe I like, you know, this vendor over here selling like the car show t-shirts. Yeah. He's got t-shirts or does a yeah. or um, You know, even taking something from our show, like we've got a dyno, that's a huge draw for us. It is, yeah. Um, you know, as a car guy or a girl or kids, you know, you can go around and see what this car or truck puts down on the dyno, whether it's a, a Ford Festiva or a yeah, full-blown I mean, drag car. And let's be honest, like, if you are have any involvement with cars. Not necessarily have one, build them, or anything. If you don't just hate cars, everybody likes to see a car. Everybody has to build one. Yeah. Everybody likes. So, you know, the dyno has worked out great for us. 
in anytime you come to any of our shows that's got the dyno, you can always find it. Oh yeah. And it's got a crowd around it? All the time, all day long. But then you know a lot of these events, you know, don't have a dyno. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But they've got bounce houses and stuff for the kids. Right. That's huge. You know, if your kids are not screaming, let's go home, I'm ready to leave. Right. You ready? You ready? You know, if they're entertaining, you get to enjoy more of your time of day. Um, and it just makes it fun for the whole family. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, Another question we always get asked, um, there's a whole lot of new cars coming. Not only our events, but, you know, Beckley events, Roanoke events, just every car show out there. You're going to have the new cars and the old cars and whatever. What's your take on that? I mean, honestly, man, it's hard for me to wrap my head around what I consider a new car and what other people consider a new car. Like, you know, that 95 Mustang, still a new car, man. but to my kid, that's an old car. But as far as like new, which what I think you're getting into is your Hellcats and stuff like that. You know, when we first started doing this, to me it was a new car. I've learned to, to appreciate a little bit more some of these guys, you know. They may have not built that car from the ground up, but they take just as much pride and put just as much effort into keeping that car what it is. I don't know if I can take from them when there's a guy out here, you know, he didn't build that, say, 65 GT350. Mm -hmm. he, he turned the wrench on it. So it, it's, it's tough. I've gotten a little bit better at it, though. Um, now, granted, you still got that, yeah, this car's 50 years old, not five years old. So you, you, gotta, you, you do have to judge them different. You've got to give a little bit more appreciation for something that's lasted that long. You got because it. somebody, at some point along the way, has put the time and effort into bringing that car back. Or even maintaining an old car. And that's what I was getting ready to hit on. You know, these guys, yeah, that might be like a 17 Roush Mustang. But in 20, 30 years, if that guy's continued to maintain and take care of that car, you know, a guy that shows up with a, you know, a Grand National that he ain't ever done anything to, but he's kept it, he's maintained it, and he's kept it clean, that car shows up at our show. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that guy's getting a lot of appreciation. So, you know, at some point somewhere, some of these, especially the all original. You know, the All Originals is a big deal, at least to me. I appreciate them a lot. And I have to accept the fact that somewhere along the way, that was a new car that a guy had to be taken care of. Yeah. Um, judging wise, it's tough. It's like, tough. it is tough. Uh, because you, you've, you've got to be able to stand on both sides of the fence there. You know, if you're that guy with that 2018 that spin all week, you pulled wheels, you you know, you've got your vacuum and your straw and you detailed that thing to the nth degree. You know, the guy with the Bondo quarter panel and the you know, seventy Chevelle there's there's you you gotta take them case by case basis. You do. That's what makes it tough. I mean especially as a show promoter and judge and don't well, and judge that's, too. That's why at our big show we split it. You, you know, have to. We, um, we had to. You got to split it to a point. You know, if you've got a top fifty, and a lot of shows do. And to be honest with you, we've had a couple of shows where we've had to do top fifty, and you try to make it as fair as possible. You know, maybe twenty five antique cars and twenty five. You know, new model stuff. Yeah, but maybe not split it down the middle, but you got to show them both love. Yeah, you got to yeah. show them both love. Um, it just makes it tough. So, like at our big show, we found out it's better to have a top 50, you know, 79 and lower, and a 1980 and newer, a top 50 as well. It's kind of like you're running two car shows. I think what we've been doing is right at 85. 85 yeah. is where we've been splitting it. Like, yeah. And that seems to be like 
the the medium. Yes. You know, everybody seems to walk away pretty happy with that one. Me looking looking into it. You've got let's just say Tracy York. A lot of people are not going to know Tracy, um, but for locals and stuff like that, a lot of people doesn't know Tracy. He's got a super clean Chevy Camaro SS. Yeah. Um, if it was in stock form, it's, it's, a, Camaro. it's a Camaro. Um, it's nothing bad. Like, I love Camaros. You know, is it winning best ofs and stuff like that? No. But, you know, the time and stuff he did, not only is it mint, like you can lick the frame. Oh, yeah. And not have no dirt on you. Yeah. And I mean. But he's, you know, did wheels, tires, fully built engine. He's done Nitrous, it. full roll cage. Like, it's set up and it's it's perfect. It's a magazine car, but it's a new car. Well, and part of the problem with the newer cars, I think, you know, Tracy's got a lot of time and money into that car. It does. But with it being a new car, it's harder for you to wrap your head around the time and money that he's got in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you see a new, well, like Tracy's, you look at that car, okay, yeah, cool paint car. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. If you don't know what you're looking at, you're seeing a new car. All right. You know, just about anybody can walk up to, like, you know, a 63 Nova, and know that, oh, okay, well, that's, that didn't just show up looking like that. Somebody's done that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's some of the thing. It's it's a little bit harder to know this stuff done to a new car. I know, like, when we first started, Frankie was anti-mini truck. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't sugarcoat that. And I'm like, I did not see the point in it. I said, man, you got to check these out. Uh, the people builds these vehicles. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the mini truck guys, that was hardcore mini truck guys. You know, maybe they still dive one of mini trucks now and then, but they've progressed they, on to. They've kind of out. They've kind of opened their minds up and start being building antique vehicles. Yeah. And they're winning. You know, your rod runs and stuff like that. When it all started out in a garage, you know. Been a bike for frame and stuff like that, making your own frames. Well, I mean, just me personally, my thing about the mini trucks was, one, I'd never had any exposure to it. I'd seen them in magazines and stuff like that. Eh, okay. But I always come from more of an antique side thing. And anybody that knows me, they know that I'm a sucker for all original, for all stock, you know, I, I like that thing to look like it just rolled off to the showroom floor. Like, I, that's just me. So when I saw some of these things, I was like, okay, so you took a good S10 and you ruined it. Who goes to you? <laughs> but, you know, the more these car shows have forced me to look at it. And once you start getting into it and the engineering and the talent, like there, there's no other word for it but talent that some of these guys have with some of the stuff they can do. Like, yeah, there is a certain talent in laying a mirror finish slick paint job. And there is also a certain talent into an entire airbrush thing truck, mm -hmm. you know? And it's the same way with like, when you do, when you do a custom frame, like, the guy that's doing that full custom frame and the guy that just built this full custom motor, yeah, I grew up with a full custom motor guy. But when you break it down and you start comparing apples to apples, that frame guy's just as talented. He's just in a different wheelhouse. A lot of your best fabricators out there is either A, mini truck guys, yeah. to be honest, or was mini truck guys. At some point, they've been involved in it. Yeah. The talent and everything is just, it, it's crazy on the mini trucks. They don't get enough love. Well, the thing about it is, like, you take somebody like me, the stock guy, the all original guy. I don't have the imagination it takes looking at that car to see what it could be. Right. You know, I've seen what it used to be, 
and every step I need to take to put it back to that. You know, you're you're a little bit more from the mini truck scene than me, so you can kind of look at that truck and you're like, we can we can do this here, we can drop that there, and I'm like, eh, the big compactor. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's something that I have definitely grown to appreciate more. You know, I got to go to the mini nats for the first time this year, and I had an absolute blast. Like that, that was a great show. I love, I love just location and everything. And I got to actually go to a mini truck show with a little bit more appreciation. And you know, these guys are doing crazy stuff. The guy we talked to, you know, that we spent thirty minutes talking to him about a door jam. Yeah. Like he put some body line. Yeah. In the door jam, like that's unheard of. It yeah, doesn't. I mean, I wouldn't have noticed it until we was talking. He's like, "Hey, man, did you check this out?" Good lord. Yeah, that's and I a mean, lot of time. You know, like I'll be honest with you. Five years ago, I would open that door and I'd be like, "I don't remember that. That's weird. Huh? I wonder why it's like that." Now that I've learned a little bit more about them, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of fabrication history, so I know of how much of a problem that can turn into. And, you know, for somebody to go through the time and the effort to put a three-inch line somewhere that 90% of people is not going to see, that just speaks volumes to the idea of the truck. Like, you're not going to get that on a lot of people outside the mini truck community. Yeah. I know, like, so I grew up kind of as this tuner guy. You know, I had a Dobbs Stealth. Yeah. You know, Subaru WRX and Cobalt SS supercharged cars, and, and that was me. Um, but I also grew with all my buddies having mini trucks. Yeah. So I kind of knew that stuff. Well, you know, as I got older, I still mess around with mini trucks. I'm still awesome friends with a lot of people in the mini truck world. You know, but I've always grew up too, you know, as a kid going to these old car shows, local, non local, whatever. So I guess I kind of appreciate all vehicles around, but you know, I'm working on my Nova right now. Yep. And you know, I've got one of the best fabricators in the mini truck world, Daryl Ho, working on my engine mode. Um, is he big in the hot rod world? No. Not really. Is he huge in the mini truck world? I think he signs autographs. Like, <laughs> the dude is awesome. He's a fabulous fabricator. And that's who I trust working on my car. Yeah, but I mean that engine that, bay panels, making everything nice, clean. Um, and that's not saying I'm throwing it into the mini truck world. It's just they have a different eye they do. for perfection. Yeah. And that's what I want on my personal vehicle. Well, like I said, you know, they can they can look at a project and see where it can go. All right. You know, then there's there's not a whole lot of people that can do that. Like. And you know, and it's not taking anything from the classic cars and stuff like that. You know, you've got you know like Joe Lucas and some stuff that comes to our car shows. Yeah. You know what he's doing with old cars and stuff like that. And for a matter of fact, ninety percent of the people who come to our shows, it's got modified you know older vehicles. You know, kudos to them for doing that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it it's really surprised me at how much just you know like the resto mod scene has really caught on in the last couple of years. You know, that's the route I went on mine. Yeah. I mean, well, well like, it. I used to knock it so bad, you know, Mr. All Original and all, but it makes so much sense. Like, if you're just wanting a cool car to ride around and enjoy every once in a while, the resto mod thing makes so much sense. Exactly. Like, it really does. What's super cool is whenever you get them like resto mod, and then you can take them, you know, four or five hours down the road at yeah. 70, 80 mile an hour. Yeah. I think. Well, that opens I think up a whole new window for I think car. you love it a lot more. Um, I can't personally do it with my car. I'm scared to drive it, you know, 20 minutes. I built this thing, I know it's going to fall apart, <laughs> apart at some point. But, uh, you know, it, it's super cool, and I'm super jealous of the people that. You know, it has the C10 trucks that's LS swapped it and, you know, maybe got it on the air ride. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but whatever. They can climb in it in Bristol that morning and yeah. drive. And to, 
wherever. Yeah, maybe they're driving from Princeton, West Virginia to Myrtle Beach and they're going 70, 80 mile an hour with AC on. I'm jealous of that because I'm going, I'm doing the same amount, but I'm having to haul mine going 70, 80 mile an hour with AC on. Right. It kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit. Uh, so kudos to them doing that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I awesome. think I think we all can agree that whether you're in the mini trucks, new cars, old cars, whatever, you know, the technology that's come along in the last 50 or 60 years, nobody out there can say, hey, it all sucks. It don't. I mean, it just don't. Like, I'm a carburetor guy. I always will be. I know that. But it's because I have nostalgia for it. Yeah. Like, I, my <laughs> grandpa taught me how to tune a carburetor. That's why I like carburetors. Am I going to stand there and die on the hill that that carburetor is 10 times better than that you know, fuel injected LS? Absolutely not. I know better than that. You know, well, down at, when we went to the drag races a couple of weeks back, me and Joey stood, stood there and had that conversation about how the last time I was here, I don't remember seeing a laptop. Yeah. And now everybody's got one, you know. If you're the guy over there tuning your carburetor in between passes, okay, good to you. Yeah, good for you, man. <laughs> but okay, good to you. So, like, you know, we kind of touched base on the mini trucks and the classic cars. You know, the resto mods. You know, lifted trucks and jeeps. My lord, have they, God, they taken off? Up. They have, and I'm I'm not gonna lie. It's something that I'm putting a lot of effort into learning. Um, I just, I don't have the background in it. So it's something that I've really had to force myself to learn a little bit more about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like, uh, you know, on the lifted side of things on the trucks, I mean, they're putting thousands and thousands and thousands yes. of dollars in that suspension. Yeah. So are the Jeeps. Um, I mean, nothing on the Jeeps, cheap. No. I mean, nothing the price on alone the on the Jeeps went outrageous yeah. so is trucks and everything else but you know you're taking this and yeah it's stock for them whenever you get it but then you upgrade the tires and the wheels and then you do this Throw suspension. a thousand rubber ducks in it i mean yeah just... i mean you got rubber ducks everywhere so that's counts for a lot <laughs> uh but i mean you're throwing let's just say this past week at the uh at the car show you know i was judging and uh ended up coming up on a jeep and uh, the guy behind her uh, was playing his stereo. And a lot of people, I don't know, maybe that's a discussion for a whole other time, but you know, and I'll let you fill in on that here in a minute because we, we probably need to throw that out. So a guy behind her was playing his stereo. And, you know, it's probably 212s, 215s. It's hard to tell what it is, but it's loud. It sounds great, a lot of bass. Whatever. Well, they're sitting right behind it. I said, why don't you put him to shame? She's got these pods all up on her Jeep. It's lifted. Speakers everywhere on this thing. She goes, you really want me to? I was like, yes. Make it happen. I mean, she turned that thing on. Did it have a lot of bass? Yes. Was it crystal clear? Absolutely. That's what I like in the stereo. Right. So it's got a whole lot of bass, but it's super clear. And uh, that's what I aim for when I get my buddy Rob to do stereos for my stuff. I want a little bit of bass. I want it to sound crystal clear. I want to hear what you say. You want to be able to hear what you I want to hear. Do. And, um, you know, there's so much, I guess, add-ons that you can do to these Jeeps, you know, with uh, the metal doors, you know, just lower parts and yeah. the stereos and everything else. Man, I've became a fan quick on Jeeps. Really? I have. If they want stupid money, oh, they are. I know my wife will have one. Yeah, they are. And I mean, I well, to that, I'm learning to get a little more love for the lifted trucks. You know, I mean, obviously growing up around here, everybody at some point knew somebody with a high boy or something like that. You know, and it's just never really been my style. But the and it's kind of the same thing with mini trucks. Like you know, there's. There's a little bit of engineering that goes into them things too. To do it right do it and right. to do it safe, it you got to have some knowledge behind it, you know. And to be honest with you, the wheels on these things, you know, I thought mini truck wheels, you know, just because maybe they don't produce these rims, so you're selling these rims for 
five grand. Oh, man. Just because some nobody's these, got these some wheels. Some of these lifted wheels, these deep dishes stuff. Oh, like yeah. Stupid. God money. almighty. Like, I know I've looked at wheels that cost more than the truck I ride every day. I'm and all up for getting a credit card my wife don't know about, charging it, paying the payment on it. She don't know nothing about it. Yeah, that's and then she, she ends up finding out about it. I'm yeah. in trouble. Uh, I don't think I can pull off a set of these no, wheels on these lifted wheels. I'm a set of some of them things, man. Uh, it might reach my credit limit. Like some of these guys, you know, they they put a lot of time and effort into their ride too. Like, and that's it's one thing I, I have to say. Like, we catch a lot of flack from some people about why this get that or this get that, you know, and I, I can see why. For the simple fact of before these car shows forced me into learning all these different aspects of the car hobby, um, I would have looked at it and been like, hey, I mean, I did many trucks, you know that. I did. I had a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, even tuners now. I don't. I don't touch the tuners. I let him do it because that's his background. That's his world. I don't know enough about the tuners to look at it and say, yeah, this, this thing's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I can judge your basic stuff. I can, I can look and know what a good interior is, what a good paint job is, stuff like that. But when it comes down to some of that stuff with these tuners, I don't know what they got in that thing. That's why I get out of the way and let somebody that has some knowledge about it look at it. Because I think that's what a lot of people's problems are. They look at like even a newer car and they don't know what they're looking at. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, and it goes back to what I was saying about Tracy because if you don't know what you're looking at, it's so easy to just kind of dismiss it as nothing special. You know, it, like the Hellcat. When the Hellcat first come along, that's the baddest that thing. That was ever. the baddest thing that was going to show up. Everybody wanted that to show as it, as it got more popular, you know, you see more Hellcats. But then once you start diving into the specialties and the limited edition ones and stuff like that, you know, if you're not up to date on that stuff, if you're not in that scene, you got these two sitting beside each other. And there's a thousand of these made. Mm -hmm. And there was only like 250 of these. If you don't know the difference between them, you're going to look at it and see, you might look at it and see two challengers. What yeah. do they do? You, you know, know what I mean? Well, in, in the new cars, it's always, it's always changing. It is. Um, you know, you can have you a Dodge Challenger, and then you can have you a Dodge Challenger RT. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. And then you got the Scat Pack, and then you got the 1320, right. and then you or got, Daytona. you got the Daytona, you've got, there's all, well, I think the Daytona is a charter. It is. Okay. Well, anyways, you've got all kinds of different ones, but even in the Hellcat, you got the Hellcat, you got the Hellcat Red Eye, you got the Jailbreak, yeah, you got the I Demon mean, even. There's, there's it's just so much. If, if you're not up to date on the stuff, it's so much harder to appreciate what you're looking at. Yeah. You know, just about anybody can look at a 69 Charger or Challenger and know what they're looking at. And, you know, even if you don't know what that car's year is by looking at the headlights or taillights or whatever. You know that, man. That's an old car. That's a cool car. That's awesome. It's harder to do that with newer cars. And I mean, it, some of it's by design, I think. I mean, we can all say that, you know, there's not as much variation in newer car designs as there was 40 or 50 years ago. But it's I, I just, I honestly think what some of the issue is, is some of the people, it's, it's just not in their will. You know? right. I hate to keep bringing up the mini trucks, but I did, where I didn't know anything about them, no clue what I was looking at. Custom frame, but, uh, cool. but you know, until I started learning about it, I couldn't appreciate it. And I think that's what a lot of it's, a lot of some of the people have going on. They just don't know what they're looking at. Well, everybody's got to keep an open mind too. You know, yeah. especially if you're going to a car show or you're judging a car show, you know, maybe it's something that you don't like. Um, you know, 
I went to car shows and I'm like, what is this thing like? Yeah. Wow. That's a whole lot going on there. <laughs> they stuck every sticker on that thing from AutoZone. Yeah. Um, my Lord. But it's not what I like. Maybe I can't appreciate it to their appreciation. Right. But you got to still appreciate it to, to an extent because they've got time in that. They've got money in that. Well, you know, I mean, what's cool to them might not be cool to us. And that's okay. Everybody's different. And stepping back and like speaking as not a judge, not anything to do with car shows, just as like a car guy. Um, you know, I might not necessarily have the budget to right. have, you know, one of the top guys in the fab world come by and do engine bay panels. <laughs> you know. But no, I mean, seriously, like, you know, you can't tell a guy that had to get the stick on, you know, studs from AutoZone instead of having like CNC polished ones that he has sucked. Because, you know, he's got as much pride and effort into that thing as you do. Good. It's just, you're on a different scale. Yeah. You know, it's, so, now granted, that being said, just because he loves his car don't mean that you get a trophy at every car show he goes to. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you can't knock him. You can't knock him. You know, I like to look at car shows judging-wise. Take the people out of it. Take all of it out of it. I'm looking at this car. I don't want to know where it come from. I want to look at this car. You know, if you've got specialty awards like all original or best restoration or something like that, that's that's a different ball game. But when I'm just looking at judging this car for this car, the details don't matter because I'm looking at this car. Mm. You know, at that point, yeah, I'm going to tell the difference between the CNC one and the AutoZone one. But yeah, you just got to keep an open mind. You I know. mean, and never bash nobody because no, but, yeah. you know, it, it's all an appreciation. It's all, <clears throat> it's all a hobby. It is. At the end of the day, it's a hobby. So let's just say you got stick on stuff. Let's just throw this out. You got stick on engine bay panels on yeah. your wife's Mustang. Absolutely. I got yeah, the best of the best. Of the best. That don't give me the right to go up and be like. Yeah, yeah, it's junk. Whatever. I'm not, Don't I, ever degrade anybody when you go to these shows. You yeah, know, what's cool not, for them, maybe they think your panels suck. And it's bad for the hobby. Yeah, it's bad. And what happens is, so you're talking to your buddies, you're laughing. They maybe hear or see you laughing. All right. So they feel some kind of way about it. They don't go back to that car show or cruising. Right. And then eventually, they just sell a vehicle. Well, now you just took all their fun away. Well, you what? Know, me and you's had the conversation too. There's guys that we saw year one with that stick on all those on stuff. Yeah. And then this year, they brought that car full circle. Absolutely. I mean, we, you know, it's not necessarily, you, can, you just can't knock it. Okay. Because that may be the best he can do with what he's doing. Well, and I like, I guess in a whole different realm of things, I like seeing that progression. Like, I've seen it first. I love it. Yeah, I um, love it. And what it is, it's, it's a little bit of competition. That's to say it's not, you'd be lying. But, you know, it's a little bit of competition. Um, of course, everybody wants to win and stuff like that. But, you know, let's just say this. Randall Cox, he's came to yeah. a lot of our shows. Yeah. I mean, honestly... Nice looking car. He's the guy I think about when we have this yeah. conversation. It's a nice looking car. It was a nice looking car when he first brought it to our show. Was it, you know, a top 50 or top 100 or best of show? I mean, some people would say yes, some people would say no. You know, but he rolls up this year. Over the last five years, he's turned that into a super nice car. It's a super nice vehicle. That's awesome. Um, I like seeing that progression. Uh, you know, same thing with, you know, let's just say people just build a vehicle to kind of take it to some shows. You know, we've got Billy Jackson that, you know, he'll fix them up, take them to a couple shows, and then he'll sell them. He's done. It's kind of cool to see people do that. 
it's it's super cool to see people build vehicles just to go to some of your events. Um, not only ours, but others. Um, you know, we got my cousin right now, Kenny Franklin. Kenny and Tabitha is building an awesome mini truck, uh, you know, with help with Daryl Poe at, you know, uh, Poe built. But they're trying to get this thing as a roller to a, a show called Showdown in the Valley. Right. Um, you know, it's going to be an awesome vehicle. Um, but just seeing people's progression, and they're trying to build a vehicle to take it here, and then they're going to unveil it whenever it's all done at this show. I like seeing that. I love it. Yeah. Um, especially with, you know, even the ones that still continue to go to shows, and every show you're like, wow, he's changed this up since last time we seen it. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's definitely people out there, cars out there, that haven't changed at all. And if a show rolled around and I didn't see them at it, I mean, I'd be disappointed, you know. Even right. though I'm not going to see anything new on that car. That's nothing wrong with that. But I, I still like seeing them. I like seeing that car. Yeah. But I, I can honestly say, you know, when I seen this car in 22, and then by 23, I'm like, man, you put some work into this thing. That, yeah, I mean, I, I that's like awesome. that. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge, you know, appreciation goes to them. Yes. Um, but it's not to say you go to every show and you've been going to shows for seven years and you've not changed anything. It's not saying you don't have a bad car. No, I mean, maybe that's exactly what you we want. We appreciate that just as much. Yeah, I mean, you, you know. You perfected that car the way you want it. Yeah, like, you know me. Like, I'm not, I'm not the change it all the time guy. Like, once I get something the way I want it, that's the way I want it. Like, I don't want to change it. And just because you might not like it, or Jim and Tom and everybody else, I'm like, I don't care. It's my car. I'm going to leave it this way. I agree. So, you know, well, it's like we, we've had this comment with Sam Thomas with his uh, courier. Yeah. I love that truck. That's I can't true. help but love that truck. I do. You know, and it's one of those cars that some people's going to look at and be like, man, won't you, won't you paint this thing? Well, he don't want to. We should put some floors in this thing. Yeah, you know, he he don't want to, and huh. I don't know that I want to. It's my daughter's favorite vehicle at our car shows, and she calls it a burnt marshmallow truck, and she loves it. And you know, he don't need to change it. Huh. Like, there's plenty of people out there that say that needs a paint job or this or that, but he loves that truck the way it is, huh. and. That, I mean, that's just, that's Sam. Like, there's a lot of people like that, too. And Sam is one of them. But yeah, I wouldn't change a thing on Sam. I know a lot of people say, oh, you need to go and restore it. I think it's killer the way it is. It's killer. I mean, a uh, guy told me, you know, me and you talked about this. guy told me that they, they call those trucks crusty. Yeah. I hate that name, but I get it. But. Yeah. And I like the patina look. Uh, you know, I had a 64 Chevy C10 that was yeah. putting it up and everything. And, you know, I get caught in the rain. Cool. I'd be following a gravel truck and wouldn't fall out. I'm not trying to fight the dude. If I was following with the Nova, I promise you I'd follow him to his house. Um, but with the C10 truck, I had one come up and pop the windshield. And that looks kind of cool. I think I might leave it in there. It was just pretend, that's the way, whatever. You know, I had my cousin Jeremy working on some body work for me, and uh, he was trying to paint, beat a little bin out. It knocked the whole thing of Bondo out, and he sat there with Gorilla Glue and Gorilla Glue that thing yeah. back in there, the Bondo. But you know what? It gave it a cool little effect. They was cool with that vehicle. You do that to a solid, super nice vehicle, oh, yeah. it's gonna stand out. Well, I mean, we had a conversation the other day uh, about Brandon's Mustang. Like, I don't know that I want to do anything to it. Like, it's so much fun to drive now because I don't care. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it takes runs, all the worry out of it. Yeah, it runs, it drives, like, oh, man, I'm going to throw this thing sideways through his curb, and if I hit a <laughs> ditch, I hit a ditch. It is what it is. Yeah. You know, like. Still playing fun with it. Instead of worrying. Yeah, if we, if we took that thing and we tore it down and we, you know, through 15, 20, 30 grand into a full restoration. Yeah, 
it's raining right now. The head car's not leaving the house. Um, and I, I, I get that from people. I don't know that I want to be that guy. Like, but on the other hand, that's what we said earlier. You know, we've kicked around the idea of finding like a 94, 95 and just pulling around the gear out of it and sticking it in. Mm -hmm. Like, the point I'm getting at, there's so many different things you can do in this hobby. Okay. So many different things. There's going to be people that are wrong. all of it. There's no wrong. Yeah. You know, and if everybody would just kind of step back and just appreciate it for Look what it is. Picture. Yes. They have a lot more fun on the show. They would. They would. So, brings me up on this next one. As far as car shows go, yeah. what is a show that everyone needs to attend at least one time? Oh, tough. That's tough. Madness. <laughs> everybody, everybody needs to Madness. Madness and Madness and But, no, I mean, I mean, a couple years ago I said Shades, but Shades. Like when we was trying to get this show up and going, Shades is what I'm kind of template. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's such a well rounded yeah. show. Um uh, man, it's awesome. And you got a lot of great shows out there. Um you know, you got shades. I've never been to Rod Run, so I can't say yes or no. You know, what Jason Bale and stuff is doing with uh, Mini Truck and Nationals, you know I mean I was so Super impressed with that show. Like it, for, for everybody that doesn't know about Mini Truck Nationals, so Mini Truck Nationals, they have, they're capped at 700 and some spots. Yeah. So what they was doing for the first little bit was just a pre-registration and they would sell out all 700 and some spots in. That day? Yeah, that day. And sometimes in a couple of hours. Um, as. So they kind of went into now where they've kind of got to get you approved and stuff like that. Yeah, they're being a little bit uh, more selective. They are, but it ain't a bad thing. No, no, I don't have uh, a problem with it. It ain't a bad thing. Um, you know, I know a lot of people would love to go in there. I'd be excited to see if that showground would allow you to put as much as you wanted. Like it was just huge. How many vehicles actually show? If they up? just done an open registration. It'd be huge. It would be like it. It easily over a thousand. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he did a fantastic job with that. It's like I mean, like um, I said, this year was my first year going. The location is killer. The people cool. are just awesome people to be around. You know, and I don't care if you like mini trucks or not. If you just go into that place with an open mind to just appreciate the quality and the craftsmanship that come along with owning a car, you you can't walk away without appreciating at least something in there. Yeah. You know, I mean that fire truck. So like, yeah. You don't you don't have to like mini trucks to look at that thing and say that's awesome. Yeah. But like that it's a lot of I mean I took my note over there, but there was yeah. a lot of there's a fifty five L there, there's a bunch yeah. of old school yeah. C teams. I mean, like, it's, it's kinda open for everything. But like I say, it's more heavily Mini Obviously truck side. Mini trucks, it's yeah. mini truck national. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's open everything. You got to strip right there, pick a cruise, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Yeah, and I mean, like, just people lined up down both sides. It's just a cool Unicorns atmosphere. dancing in the road. You got unicorns dancing, getting pulled over by cops. But yeah, I mean. A little bit of drinking going on. It is, it is. Uh, but the cops allowed you to kind of have fun they with the whole time. Have a good time. And nobody took it over the top. You know, it's a show that what's well, adults drinking that knows knows how to be adults. Yeah, you know they can say, it's, okay, I need to chill out. It's a show that I could have enjoyed at twenty five, yeah. but I can also enjoy with my wife and my kids. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's a good one. You know, shades. <laughs> shades with shades, man. Shades with shades. I, like, I wish. There was car shows that kind of did their own shows. Yeah. Uh, shades was the the crown, you know. Now you got the triple crown that, you know, Bobby Adelaide's got big plans with his team on um, having this show, you know, shipped out to Nashville and kind of doing his own thing. And got Kim digging, a bunch of a bunch of people going. And I'm sure that's a show that we're going to say next year. That's, that's the one you need to attend. Maybe that's the baddest show Maybe. in the nation. I mean... 
Um, I haven't been to it. Um, I mean, just the last couple of years, it just ain't worked out. But I'd, I'd like to go. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to just see, you know, how much of Shades bled over in. Well, I'm sure they're going to have to take some things from Shade. Shade just did stuff so good. Like, yeah, I mean, it was just, it's just quality. Like, quality. Yeah. Um, they just did it for so long, but it came in second nature. Going. That's it. Yep. Uh, there's another show, and I'm going to try to get to it. It's in October, um, depending on how we got the business and stuff, kind of up and going, super busy, what have you. But uh, definitely want to go whether I get to take something or not. But it's uh, it's showdown in the valley, and it's still in Maggie Valley. They still got the cruiser. Yeah, you. Uh, it's more lifted trucks, lifted jeeps, modified trucks, modified cars. Uh, I don't know what what they had as far as classic goes. I guess we'll see. Um, but he's got a lot of traction on that show. It was a pretty big show for his first year, um, and this year I. They're expecting a lot more. Um, excited to kind of see for him and the team, because I know the show promoters that show, how that show kind of goes. Um, I see it probably being up there with many nights in the next several years. Um, but, you know, who knows? I hear from one for you. Mm-hmm. Show you've never been to that you'd love to go to. Whew, well that's gonna be easy. Well, it's not really going to be easy. I've always wanted to go to Alabama, right. uh, in Alabama, which they moved it to Talladega, which kind of intrigues me maybe a little bit more. Okay. Um, definitely, you know, I guess you, if you had a bucket list show, uh, Alabama's there. Right. With LST. I, uh, it's LST for me. LST. Hey, I want to hit both of those shows. Those are my two bucket list shows. Hey, um, I would have loved to seen Battle of Alabama when it was by the Battleship. And and I, unfortunately, I never got to do that. I'd always, like, man, I had, I've had a couple times where we've been promised to be on VIP Road yeah. uh, with many trucks that I've had. And, uh, man, it's just like something come up. Like, one year it was our car show. Like, I can't say, right. yeah. hang on out. Yeah. I'll handle this. You yeah. got this. Um, the other one, you know, I was best man at one of my best friend's weddings, right. um, which now lives in Cincinnati. I can't just be like, hey, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go to a car show. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, and Craig Raleigh, I mean, he was kind of pushing for it, right. <laughs> but I, I didn't want to let my buddy. Well, I mean, I've seen it happen. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, you've had some people ditch out on you on that. Um, uh, but now, LST for me, for sure, you know. I've watched a ton of videos on it. It's a killer looking show. Um, obviously, I don't know the guys that put it on, but they seem like they do a really good job. I've never met them, you know, just watching videos. Right, just watching YouTube, stuff like that. I think one that kind of got me going, I've made you watch it, and a lot of our staff, so LST did a video on YouTube. It's kind of behind the scenes. It was. Like, and it just, shows you. like following up to the show that way. It shows you, like, realistically, you're wanting to put a car show on and you think, oh yeah, I've got 10 buddies and we'll just go do a car show. And that's great, that's a car show. Yeah. You want to put on a car show event, a super show, anything like that, you need to watch that video. You do. And because it's, it really it's not even you. showing the six months worth of aggravation build up to. No. It's just week of and every headache that can come It out. is. You know, everything from water not working, so yeah. you got to get porta johns Guy off. dropped the porta johns off in the wrong place. Like, and then they fixed the water, so now he's just got water stations and yeah. porta johns for nothing, and it's, right. what do you say, 10, 15 grand? Yeah. One grand worth of stuff? And people don't realize the expense that goes on on these big, big, big shows. Yeah, and it adds up quick. And, uh, you know, just hearing his wife kind of talk about, you know, excitement and stuff, passion he's got, I mean, that's huge. Well, I mean, one of the biggest things for me when I watched that video, you know, he talked about the stuff that they stressed about year one mm-hmm. or year two. And by year five, it was like, that's it? That's nothing. Like, that's not a big deal at all. And, like, I love the fact that, you know, we've done this long enough. We're finally starting to get a little bit of that. 
Yeah, we are. You know, um, we're not there, LST. Oh no, or not what I'm saying like that. by any means. But the you know stuff that we was stressing about four years ago. Yeah. That happened that day. That you know just threw a wrench in the whole thing. Now it's a hiccup. It's it's not even a speed oh, yeah. bump. So. You know, I can remember when we got like a two hundred and fifty dollars sponsor our first year. I was like, son, we made it. Yeah. Like, we just need like one or two more and we've got trophies covered and we've got all this covered and yeah this is awesome and now you know to put on a big show like this the 250 dollars helps and it helps tremendous yeah and i mean but we need a lot of those still gotta have those but like, you know you're getting 10 15 thousand dollar sponsors now <sighs> We're accustomed to that. Like we gotta have that now, you know, to help. Yeah, with, I mean, it's, it's help just with what staff. It takes. It's just what it help takes. with staff. You know, getting people parked. Uh, I really shouldn't say that because we all do it for free. Yeah, honestly. I mean, but I mean, not this year, but last year we had to pay people to help park. We did. Yeah. Uh, this mean, year we kind of just let them park wherever. That was just. Uh, kind of so back on that, but you know, shirts. You know, we have four or five thousand dollars. And cost in shirts, you know, and trophies, we've got about the same amount. Flyers, yeah. we've got, yeah. you know, yeah. 1500 two grand in flyers that people, you know, just look at their car and. Yeah, like this, this is little stuff that adds up so much faster than, than you would ever think it does. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even doing it, it adds up on us quicker than we think so. It does. You know, you're on a phone call and somebody's like, yeah, I mean, we could do that. It'll be $2,500. That's not as bad as I thought it'd be. Okay, well then three more of those phone calls that week and now you're sitting on eight or nine grand before you even realized it, so. Luckily, we've we did a good job with, you know, having some stuff donated to us like generators and, yeah. and porta johns I mean, and stuff. And we, we're super grateful for that. Really got a lot of people that. and shows that we went to haven't had that. You know, they've had a pay out of pocket yeah. for, you know, certain things like Porter Johns and stuff. Man, I feel for them. I do too, because I mean, that that is one of those small necessities that nobody at the show is gonna think about if you have them. It's so when you everybody's don't. gonna talk about it if you don't. Yep. So, you know, it's 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 a necessity that you have to have at almost any cost. Well, it's kind of like our show this past week. You know, if I'd known we needed Porter Johns, and they allowed us to put them over there. We would have did that. But whenever we we're told, yo, you got Porter Johns on premises, we're fine. And then I mean, we got a car show. They are. Was. It's a walking distance. It's a yeah, hike. It but could have been a lot better? Yeah. It could have. It could have been a little bit more ideal. Yeah, it could have been more ideal. Um, but we made it work. But at the it's same time, we had to move where we was putting it. You know, we're... Where we had talked about putting it was a little bit closer, but it just wouldn't hold the capacity of it. So we had to move out into the field a little bit. Like it, it was just a lot of moving parts on that one. Um, on the day before. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we appreciate them letting us kind of hold a couple of these events because uh, you know it's been kind of awesome. You know, as much money as we can raise for the Ron McDonald House. Yeah, I mean, um, and to help us have other shows and stuff. You know, it's awesome. And I know Ron McDonald House greatly appreciates it. Yeah, they, I mean, they're just super people to work with on this. They like, you know, they don't breathe down your neck about stuff. The calls that they have, it's, I mean, it's awesome. We both personally have met and know people that, that dealt with them before the shows and after the shows, oh, yeah. you know. And, like, it, it's a charity I don't mind. I don't mind putting as much time and effort as as we go through with this stuff into it and get nothing out of it oh, because yeah. I'm I'm perfect. If they went so far away, you know, they would come to all our events. They right. love our events. Right. And actually, spoiler alert, for Madison and Mountains, they're getting a plaque on yeah. their wall that's going to be dedicated to us from here on out forever. Yeah. So we'll have to release that later on on our Madison Mountains Facebook page. Um, but we did a lot for them, um, and we we appreciate that. That's huge. Yeah, that made my week. Yeah, 
uh, not just Dave. So. And they, they support us wholeheartedly. I mean, nothing we want to do, they really get to kick back with. Like, they I really called them and I was like, hey, what do you think if we would happen to do a big show? And I can't tell you where. But what happened if we take a big show and put it somewhere else and still have our big show? Are you cool with that? And they gave me some ideas. Yeah. And I ran some ideas by them. And, uh, you know, they love it. And they're down. Um, we just got to figure everything out. You know, we're super busy now with a job. Um, yeah. You know, we kind of stepped out and kind of made our own business. Really wasn't ideal. I was kind of planning on maybe just being a stay-at-home dad. And, um, and Frank had a job. Yeah, it's and, something uh, I've kicked around for a while anyway. And then just kind of just sitting around just, thinking, you know, maybe we could kind of do a small. Yeah. And, and uh, next thing you know, here we are. We don't do anything small, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be big. It's going to be huge. So. I mean, I think it's going to be good for us. I think it's, you know, it's good for the community. Like Any, any small business is good for the community. It is. Uh, so we'll be attending some events and stuff like that and kind of push our business, our small business. So, uh, but moving on, you know, I was talking to Daryl earlier. Yep. Uh, me and Daryl goes way back. We're good buddies. And he mentioned something to me. And it wouldn't nothing to do with our show or any show, but uh, it got me to thinking how much trophies is too much trophies at a car show? Everybody takes on a trophy. Yeah. I mean, it's just my opinion. Like, I don't like the shows like that. Just personally, that's just not me. Like, yes, I know we say that. You know, you're there for the not for the trophy, but to have a good time. I completely agree. I don't. On the other hand, I don't. I'm gonna stop. Let me finish. Okay. Now, let me finish. On the other hand, mm -hmm. if I put the time, effort, money into this car, anybody wants some kind of gratification for that. And what better way to do it than a trophy? that said, yours is better than his. Yeah. Like, that, you know, do I think people need to blow a gasket over not winning a trophy? No. Do I think that everybody should get to take one home? No. I'm not a participation trophy guy. I'm not when it comes to basketball, car shows, anything. Winners win, that is what it is. So, how many is too many? Like, that's, that's a hard question to answer because obviously it depends on the size of the show. Um, you know, I think if, if you've got about the same amount of cars every year and roughly, God, that's tough. I mean, that, that's a super tough. tough question. I give you my spiel about it when you're done. You know what? Go ahead. Uh, I love so how much trophies is too much at a car show? You know, you could kind of factor in the size of the show. If it's all, let's just say, an all Mustang show, you could probably get by, you know, if you had 200 cars doing like a top 50. Okay. Um, same thing with Jeeps. You know, you had 200 Jeeps, whatever. But whenever you're doing a car show that just throws... Everything, everything into the mix it kind of changes stuff a little bit okay um you know we do at the big show a top 50 for certain class down top 50 yeah, you know, yeah. certain age and down is that too much i personally i think so but you know we got a lot of best ofs and stuff like that is it too many best ofs Absolutely, it is. I think the two. I think we're the best we're of too many best of too many best of. Um, I, mean, I almost think it's too many top, you know, whatever. But here's the thing, and let's just be honest with you. If you don't have the trophies, you don't get the participation, the entries. No, no. So if you don't have the entries, it's kind of. It's kind of coming full circle. If you don't have the entries, you don't have the money. You don't have the money, there's nothing to donate to. There's no need for a car show. There's no need for a car show. So to say, and it cracks me up, because some of it I agree, it ain't about the trophies. I think 
the fine line of it's not about the trophies. The trophy shouldn't dictate whether you had a good time or not. That day. it should, and there, it should at all, but it does. Let's just be real about it. We start this podcast to kind of get in some feels a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it I does. That. Here's my thing: if I'm going to three hours down the road to a car show, I've heard all about this. It's awesome. You know, they have 700 cars at this car show. They got a top 50. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Don't think for a second on Monday, and this show's on Saturday, that I'm not trying to get my car ready cleaned up. Absolutely. Don't think for a minute, once I get there, I think I got him beat. I, I completely agree. I got him beat for sure. Man, that that's probably going to be the best to show you right here. I, I agree. Whenever I think it don't matter as much is when it's a little bit more local. You know, so if you're driving 10 minutes down the road, 15 minutes to a car show, you know, you're going, it's for charity, whatever. I don't care. I'm hanging on my buddy. My buddy's coming in from an hour away. If it happens, it happens. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Maybe I don't even clean it, whatever. But we've had plenty of people come to our show. Here's registration money. I'm not, I'm not registered, registered at yeah. all. Yeah. In return, it kind of screws up your actual registration numbers. It does. But I'm okay with that. Whatever. So long as you're having a good time, you donate yeah, to I mean, charity. You donate to charity. I'm okay with it. I can say, yeah, we put on 447 vehicles when really we had you know close to five. Yeah, because I mean we can't register because what's you know we got now. It has to be judged. There's no option. And you don't care about a trophy. You don't want one. Right. I'm not going to make you go register. Exactly. Uh, so, it is what it is. But kudos to those guys that say it ain't about the trophy. I'm still coming. I'm still supporting. Right. Here's the money. You don't have to register me. Right. Kudos to y'all. Keep doing y'all's thing. That's when it's not about the trophy. Even when you enter, that's fine. It can still, yeah. it's not about if the trophy. If you take one home, you take one. But let's just be real. Everybody's got that competitive side of them. Everybody. If not, All right. I, everybody's got it. I'll give you the competitive side. Everybody's got it. And where I go with that, I'm competitive. I'm competitive with everybody. I don't care if you're five and you want to play air hockey, I'm probably going to try <laughs> But my thing about it is, because I'm competitive, if... You know, I've been going to this car show for three years, and there's around 150 cars out of it every year, and they hand out 150 trophies. I don't really care if I win that trophy. Like, what am I winning? You know what I mean? Like, I get that there has to be trophies. There has to be. There has to be. You know, if we, you would have zero we've trophies. Had that talk before. Like, you'd have zero trophies. You, can, you, you can love your job. You can enjoy everyone you work with and everything you do all day long, but you're not going to hang out without a paycheck. Right. So, you know, going to a car show without trophies, you know, that's a really big cruise in. Yeah. So, but on the other hand, I think you can have too many trophies at the same time. Well, I think you can. You know, I think the less amount of trophies you have kind of holds, I guess, more value than anything right? Um, because you can say, you know, I went to this car show and it's, it was 700 cars there and they had a top 50, I'm running one home. But that's only good for a couple of years because if you got 700 cars at that car show and you cut it down to say 50 trophies, how many years are you holding 700 cars there? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're right. You know, I think, I think maybe with, with our show, Maybe we've got a little bit too many best ofs and I think there's whatever. too many best ofs. I'm happy uh, with the tops we have. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it, could, it might could go both ways. I mean, heck, the other day I was saying, why don't we do a top 100 for, you know, everything All new. All things, new things. Yeah, yeah, new things. And I had just two kind of car shows. And at one the same time, time, I was like, eh. I don't like it. Uh, but, I mean, trophies attract people. I mean, you can have a... Um, well, you know, the basic middle of the mall trophy there. Yeah. Are you going to drive three hours for that trophy? But if you got something cool and it's handmade and whatever, that's a draw. Now, I learned about these draws. Matt, Matt Hodgson was telling me. 
you know, this year when we was trying to get Magnus kind of all lined up and, you know, he helps with, you know, artwork and stuff like that. But, you know, we tell him everything we had going on in our show and he's like, man, that's a draw. That's a draw. That's a draw. Man, you got a ton of draws. Trophies is a big draw. It is. You're it not going to go for just some cheap, you no. know, trophy that's been around since the 70s. No, I mean, yeah. You I mean, know, two-page, I mean, three-page trophy, you're not going to go. But, I mean, if you got something custom-made. The last slide, man, I mean, you talked about um, just the basic, is this a soccer trophy or a car show trophy? Like, you know, we've had them. Yeah. I'm not a fan of them. They are what they are, though. They're, they're a trophy, you know? Like, I like the more custom stuff, you know that. I, I like theme trophies, that's my thing, mm -hmm. like, you know. But you gotta have them, it's a necessary, you gotta have them. it's not a car show without trophies, like it's not. To be honest with you, the more trophies you have, I don't care what nobody says, the more trophies you have, the more attendance you got. Yeah, but I'm to also extent. I'm also the guy that, to extent. I like the fact that going to a car show you know, if if I build this car mm -hmm. and I go to a car show and everybody gets a trophy, even even if seventy five percent of the people get, I don't like that. There's not as much gratification in me as if I built this car and I went now five hundred cars. There was a hundred trophies and I got one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a little bit more pat on my back personally. It is, but if you have a hundred and fifty car show and a hundred of them wins. That's when I think you start having to scale back your trophies a lot. I, I, yeah, because I mean, you're getting, you know, what, what's worse? You've got 150 people and you've picked 10 to 15 guys that win a trophy? Or you've got 115 people and you picked 15 or 20 guys that don't win a trophy? Uh -huh. Because at that point, that's what you're doing. Like, you're, you know, majority of people's women, so now you're saying, you know, okay. Not you win a trophy, you know, that one's not going to win a trophy. So I there's, did, there's a happy medium. Well, I've been to some shows, uh, and luckily I didn't reach my vehicle. I didn't even have my vehicle there. Um, but, you know, I'm friends with a lot of people in the car yeah, community. Yeah. You go to some shows, and you'll have 102 cars, and you got a top 100. Yeah. Um, I would be more pissed off if I was those two that didn't win a trophy. I would never come back. That's just me, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I would never come back. Whether I thought it was should be or not. I come back one more time. It would just aggravate me because, you know, now you just. It's not that you don't have a winning car. You've got the worst car. Yeah, you've got two of the worst vehicles yeah, here. Your two cars are right, by far the worst cars. Honest with you, I hear about it a lot, you know. They had a top 50, they only had 60 cars come. You're picking 10 mm. cars. Like, you're picking 10 losers. You're not picking best of. Mm. I mean, you, you're you obviously picking the best of. But by the time you go through it, you've singled out those 10 cars as not winners. Mm -hmm. Not pick these cars that didn't win. Yeah. So, I, I, you guys got to scale them back to an extent yes. that makes sense for your show. For your show. I mean, look. We've had a couple of shows this year. We had a certain number of trophies in May. We ain't taking that amount of trophies to every show throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Like, God, why would we? Like, I don't know. It's that is, that is a super tough question, and it's, it's it's hard to pick the right answer. I mean, our little shows we pull usually between 150, 180 cars. Yeah, 150 and 180 uh, top 50. I think it's fine, but I think a lot of people get more bent up out of shape that there was 100, 120 and it didn't win. Right. But they're kind of okay with going to the big show. And there being 300 that didn't 300 win. 300 that didn't win. Um, that's one of the big reasons we're not going to really mess around with small shows next year. That and you know, on top of being busy. I don't, I don't even know if I'd put it as not mess around. Like, we've already kind of run into it with this year's show, you know. Like, Chad's kind of touched on us opening our own place and everything. Like, it's not that we don't want to do it. Like, 
I love doing these shows. I love doing the 500 car shows as much as I do I the 250 car shows. Which is so easy. But, but. The, the thing that we've kind of run into this year, and it's really just, it's really made us look at it. It's getting to the point where something, we've got to pick attention to give. You know, like, I just personally, I'd rather focus on putting a killer money show on and running a really successful business mm -hmm. than just kind of, you know, having to pull a little bit from everybody and everybody kind of suck it for it. That's, that's me personally. So for me, like having the little shows, little shows is awesome and it goes so smooth because yeah. we're so used to something big. Yeah. Um, for me, you get a lot more complaints about the shows. Like, why is the food vendor set up here and not yeah, here? I mean, the music's way too loud for the DJ. Um, yeah. It's it's one of those things you're taking a risk of damaging what you work to kind of create and build up um, over a show that. Yeah, and it's I mean, just. If, if it's a normal show that we got asked to help with. That's what I was going to say. If we're, uh, if we're I'm not going to damage our reputation um, and what we've been doing and doing well um, for something that, you know, I don't have no, I can't help. Yeah, you know, I mean, I can't help that they want to set vendors here and they don't let us go out here and park and right. I don't like pulling in the grass here. Well, that's out of my control. I don't own this place. Exactly. This is and where they want us. You know, we help. We do the, as much as we can to put on our car show. Mm -hmm. um, but the simple fact about it is, you know, some of these events, it's it's not our final decision on a lot of things. You right. know, um, that's one beauty about the May show. It, it is like that's our baby. We do it what we want to do. Yeah, Bluefield's been awesome about and pretty much like the key to the city is what yeah, I tell everybody, everybody, you know, if I want to. Like, we run it by them, and that's pretty much it. Like, We've got some awesome stuff stored for you oh, yeah. uh, for May show. And, of course, that's going to be our fifth year anniversary, so, so we're going to uh, big. might as well do a big, big, especially if you're kind of wanting to scale down the little shows and, and uh, you know, not as do as much as those. You might as well dump everything you got into what's working and what's working is our what's big show for us is a show that we we get to do our way yeah. and i mean me personally i have i have less second thoughts about it not that i second guess working with anybody else or anything but you know when it comes to the may show whether something worked didn't work whatever it was our decision that, that caused that mm -hmm. and you know, I can't say, well, it would have been a lot better if we could have done this. You know, well, if we didn't do it, it was our fault. So, we're, uh, we got a lot of awesome, exciting stuff. I wish I could share it with y'all, but this ain't Madness in the Mountains. This is the shed. That's right. Kind of stuff. We're just talking about all kinds of shows. But that show is going to be happening in May next year. Uh, we put that on. Um, we've got probably who I think some of the best staff out there. You know, you're talking about 400 and some, 500 and some cars coming to a car show event in Bluefield, and it's only ran by eight people. Eight people. Eight well, staff ran that people. show last year. Eight, eight staff people. people. Um, man, like, I can't say enough good things about the people we've got in place, because, you know, anybody else running a show like that's got, you know, 15, 20, 30 people, maybe even more. Um, you know, we do it with eight. And we had a lot more. It's just people people want that. I really wouldn't say what's in it for me. but No, but they want to get something out of it. They want to get something out of it. And I mean, I completely get that. I do too. You just um, can't pay people with a charity account. Like, no. I guess you could. But, you know, even that one year, we had to pay people to help kind of judge. And... Help the, pay people park because so many people had like soccer games going on with their yeah. kids and yeah. you know family takes president over a car show that we're doing. I get that, 
Um, so we had a we had to have some hard staff, you know, last year, and it, it didn't work out too great. And on our side, no, like that, um, was, that was twenty two. So we decided we'll just handle it all ourselves. And I mean, be short staffed. And we we run into some stuff. I know things took a little bit longer than everybody expected. Honestly, Colonel Embo says nobody was expecting that many cars this year. So I mean, I think for the most part, though, it went it went pretty smooth. Well, I right. think for the most part, a lot of people knew that it was going to take a little bit. You know, they expecting that three o'clock time, but you know, it's for all shows. I've been to shows. I mean, I'm looking at a trophy here from Showdown in the Valley, or not Showdown in the Valley, but East Tennessee Showdown. Um, you know, I had some really good buddies run that show. Right. Some of them still do. Some kind of dropped out, kind of started doing their own show. But, you know, they don't start doing trophies five, six o'clock. Right. And it's a two-day show. Yeah. And um, it takes a lot longer than what people really It really does. does. Like, you can't. I don't eat at these shows. I very I don't, rarely get to go to the bathroom. We have done this show for five years, and I've yet to have one always talk and you don't know what you're missing. Like, I do sneak out and get up in Lloyd's top. I, I don't get that look. I do. But you, I mean, you, people can't have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. You can't complain the, you know, about the judging, about this didn't get judged fast and or long enough and stuff like that, and then turn around and complain because- it Took so long. Because it took so long. I mean, you know- It's a double-edged sword. It is. And, it's another one of them things you gotta find a happy medium. I mean, me personally, I take the judging of these cars very serious. I do too. You know, and I wanna make sure that it is judged the right way. And if that takes a couple hours longer, sorry. I mean. I mean, even at our smaller events, you know, you, you take some time you know, you're not taking 15, 20 minutes to judge a vehicle. This ain't a national car show. I mean, our big one, yeah, it's different, but you know, the smaller shows, I wouldn't say you gotta be quick, but you gotta hit every spot, kind of do the full walk around look, you know, check body lines, check interior, engine bays, whatever. Right. What have you, wheels, tires, right. overall appearance. Um, but for the most part, you know, you kind of got to be somewhat quick with it or you're yeah. going to have more people mad about you. Right, and that's what I'm saying. And then I don't want to get yelled at at the end of the show, so I want to do the right thing and the right people win. And, and, and like I say, it's all my preference compared to yours. Judging is preference, period. Um, I can judge a vehicle, and it's a whole different score than what you judge. Judging. That's nothing wrong. It's just he might like Fords, and I don't hold him accountable for that, but even though this is a Ford F-150 truck bed desk, uh, it's the only Ford I got um, is this, this puppy right here. Well, I mean, it's not even preference. I mean, you know, it, not every judge, not hardly any judge, is going to know everything about every car. Yeah. So, you know, like we talked about earlier, I don't touch tenders. Why do I not touch tenders? Because I don't know anything about tenders. You know, I let you handle that stuff because you know more about it. Um, and... We're working the ends of the mini truck. The mini trucks are I'm trying working. to grow. On. I'm working in on that. Yeah. But old car stuff, we got that. You know, I've... I've been around old cars forever, so yeah. you know, I, would, I don't know what to look for. And we've got other judges too that's that's all up on that kind of thing. And um, but like I say, every show's different. You know, you can go to a, a car show twenty minutes down the road and it'd just be nothing but classics, and you can go another ten minutes and it'd be nothing but jeeps. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. You could take one hundred and fifty cars, put them in a car show, and have three different car show judges. Oh, score different. And you're gonna have three different winners majority of the time. Like, yeah. um, I mean, it's not perfection. You know, there might be something that a judge missed or that saw that the other guy didn't. You know, if, if you really picked apart all these cars, everyone, I mean, picked them apart, 
one, it take it take days to judge three or four hundred cars, and two, there's a lot of people probably won't be happy with their score. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'll tell you this, you know, you know, I know this ain't a, a madness podcast. It's just an overall car show, but you know, we've got experience on our own show. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, that's... so like at our show, uh, this year was the best of show. Got a trophy and a thousand dollars cash. Yeah, both of them. So when you're throwing out a thousand dollars best to show, you got to be on your P's and Q's to make sure that is one hundred percent the vehicle of best to show. And you know we'd go to one vehicle, and it'd be multiple people that would look, try to nitpick it to death, and then we'd go to the other one and try to nitpick it to death. You know we had this narrowed down to about three or four vehicles. And, you know, it was a tough choice that, you know, we finally had to just really take all the scores I together mean, yeah, and kind of add them up from everybody judging, even after nitpicking with us, because yeah. it was, I mean, you're talking about $1,000, best of show. It, I mean, it's tough. Like, it just, it's flat out tough. Kudos to all the judges out there. They don't get enough recognition. Uh, there's a reason that most of these guys are gone before the trophies are handed out. Yeah. Like, it's, it's <laughs> I know, I know a couple years, that's before I kind of even jumped in and kind of started helping judge because, you know, I had a certain, I guess, standard of where I thought judging needed to be. Right. And, you know, some people was on the same page, some people wasn't. Um, so I got involved with it. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've got it down pat now, I think. You know, some people might not think so, but. I'm sure know, there's plenty of people who don't. It's people's opinion. It's people's opinion. It just kind of is what it is, but, you know, um, I don't know. Um, what else you got? I don't really have anything else. Um, you know. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. So I guess we're we gonna got close. enough off our chest on this. We got enough. So we're gonna try to do this podcast every Thursday. Uh, of course, if anything happens, we can't. Uh, something crazy like that happens. Yeah. How about we'll say on. we're gonna try to do one once a week, most likely on Thursday. Yeah. How about that? Timidly. Um, but I guess in closing, I think everybody just needs to. Get out and enjoy a show. Yeah. Like, um, you don't know if you don't like it unless you go. You know, you went to many nights this year. No, What's the chance I mean, of you ever going? Four or five years ago, you know, I'm you not going to that show. I told you to go. Let's not go. not going to show. And I got yeah. drove to it, and I have to admit I loved it. Same okay. thing with Sparks. You know, we're going to Sparks. Um, it's kind of a destination show. It is. You know, it's a nice mean. show, but it's... It's right there at Vision Forge. And right. man, you got you got these wings. I'm telling you, got these uh, wings. We're gonna find out about these wings. Y'all watch and, Zay uh, come next week. He's gonna hear about it if them wings end up to par. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. But, uh, but yeah, I guess for the most part, you know, get out and enjoy the show. Absolutely. Um, Let's go out and have a good. Show. Appreciate the time that it takes to put on these shows, whether it's a small cruise in um, or you know a, a massive national event. There's people that works around the clock to try to make sure this show happens. And I promise you. Appreciate some of them autos on sticker guys, man. I mean, everybody loves their car. If you don't love your car, why do you have your car? Right. So, you know, is somebody's car better than somebody else's car? Obviously. But that don't mean you gotta you gotta talk about it. I mean, if if you're the guy that thinks Something needs to be fixed on yours, fix it. And if the guy besides you don't think anything needs fixed on his when clearly it does, it is what it is. Just have fun, enjoy it. That's all you gotta do. And if you get a trophy, you get a trophy. And you've done something right for doing it. Like, just try to enjoy the hobby as long as we can because Eventually, we're going to have some we, electric cars. We might all be sitting at, at the end of extension cords by the time we're old. We might be sitting at a uh, Tesla 
uh, charging station. It might be. Doing our cars and coffee. God, I'm not excited for those charge. days. Like, I'm out. Uh, I used to think it'd be kind of cool to maybe swap one, but uh, I get wild hairs every now and then. You surely do. I do. And uh, uh, I just enjoy my, you know, cammed up car going on the road. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of like back what I said about carburetors for me. It's nostalgia. Like, it's it's seeing, you know, seeing my grandpa tune an engine by his ear. You know, like the guy that can break out that laptop and make that engine do some crazy things. You know, we spent, what, 30 minutes last night twisting around on distributors, tuning the car when a guy can do it nowadays in two or three clicks. But it's it's the nostalgia of it for me, and no matter what kind of electric car or anything else you got, you're not taking that from me. Like I, that's what I like about it, and that's why you know I think a lot of people are like that. That's why a lot of these newer cars, they're hard they're hard to admit because it's it's just not the same. Now, do I like electric cars? I love the performance aspect of it. Interior's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know. I've drove a couple. I love them. Am I going to go buy one? Uh, am I going to take the car shows and stuff? Probably not. They make so much sense. Like they, they make so much sense. A lot of cars. Yes, they do. Like, and I know, like, that sounds crazy coming from me. Like, okay, if if I work in town. And I'm in town 90% of the time. Okay. Like, I see it makes mean. so much sense for me to have a car that I can drive around, plug up when I get to the house that night. But where, where they're falling short is, you know, yeah, not a whole lot of cars out there drive longer than 400 miles on a tank of gas. The difference is, I can refill that 400 miles in three minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it don't take me three hours to do another 400 miles, so... Like, I, it'll eventually get there. I'm sure there's two guys sitting around doing a podcast talking about the car when it was everybody was driving buggies. So, yeah, I'm sure. it'll get there, but it's got a long way to go. All right. Let me have my old cars and stuff. I'm happy. Yeah. Maybe, if nothing else, once once these electric cars catch on, the price on these old gas guzzlers will tank and we afford to have 10 or if anybody out there is wanting to get rid of your old car for dirt cheap and get you a electric new vehicle, contact us. Absolutely. We might buy it from you. That thing ain't worth nothing. Go get you an electric car. Uh, but like I say, I guess in closing statement, try to get out to a show. If you can't get out to a show, bad weather, spend, spend time with your family. Yeah, I mean, get out and do some fun stuff. Drag one of them kids off of Xbox, have them come out there and clean the rim with it, something. I mean, you know, like I said, I'll sit here and talk about tuning cars and everything. My grandpa, that's stuff I'll never, I'll never forget. No. You know, as much as, as much as that kid might hate it today, one day they'll appreciate it. So, have a good time. Find your cruise in. Find your car show. We'll see you Thursday.